And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. And we continue to celebrate National Health Week right here on St. Croix. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the details. We are here in the Sunday Market, Sunday Market Square or Times Square. How's everybody? Here with Indio, and he just got his results. Jason Henry, he is the program coordinator for the Fredrickston Health Clinic. And all day they've had their um, band here. And look, they got the beautiful ladies here doing the testing. And gentlemen there got their Nutra grain bars and getting a little checkup, checkup from the neck up. Jason, this is a fantastic thing. I know the community Thank appreciates you. it. Yes, this week is a National Head Center Week. So what we're doing pretty much, we are here to provide the services and free services to individuals in the community. Yesterday, we were doing at the Fredericks at Fish Market. Today, we're providing services in Christian said, primarily to the homeless, but also to anyone else. And tomorrow, we'll be at Agriculture Collaborating with, with the Department of Agriculture. You're getting your free blood pressure, free cholesterol, free glucose, and free HIV testing. And from there as well, too, we provide services where we refer you into the head center. And if anyone is unable to come into the head center, they feel free. We will also have services in there. We have something that we call a side and fee program. So if you're uninsured, or rather that, we would help you to be able to have a side and fee, meaning that you pay little to nothing to receive services to see a full doctor, to see, a, to see a doctor. That. And that's what the service is all about. And that's what National Health Center Week is about. Us coming back into the community where we can pretty much provide a service to the individuals who are uninsured and who needs the services. We at the Department of Agriculture tomorrow. tomorrow from 7.30 until 2 p.m. And it all stops on Friday, I guess? Yes, fri yeah, Friday is then we have an appreciation day for the staff, so we're having a fun day at our Kramer's Park for the staff. Wow, yes, Kramer's yes. Park. Are you ladies going to be at Kramer's Park for the thing there? We but, then I'll be there. <laughs> no problem. They got some beautiful people working there. Y'all say hi. Thank you very much for helping out the community. We're in the Sunday market area, as uh, they like to be called, Times Square. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And when we come back from this break, the history of Leoc. Stay with us for that. Recently at the AARP office, executive director of WAPA, Hugo Hodge, explained the history behind the LEAC. Before you can get a good understanding of the LEAC, is to understand the history behind it and, and how we ended up with our dependency on fuel oil, why we're dependent on fuel oil, and who else is dependent on the same uh, means of generating power. If you look back at, at, at the size of the systems in the Caribbean, get an understanding for why we're dependent on fuel oil. In, we have two districts here in the Virgin Islands. You have the St. Thomas, St. John district. You have the St. Croix district. You have separate generating facilities because there's a trench in between St. Thomas and St. Croix, which is the second deepest in the world. So we cannot tie the two islands uh, because of this. The St. Thomas, St. John district peaks at, well, right now about 80, 82, 83 megawatts. Historically, the most it's been is 88 megawatts. The St. Croix district right now peaks around 51 megawatts. And historically, the highest it's been is 55 megawatts. This is a small system. I just told you about 1,200 megawatt systems of just units in the, in the mainland. We're talking 80 and 50 megawatts here in the Virgin Islands. And we are one of the largest in the region. Nevis peaks at 9 megawatts. St. Kitts peaks at 25 megawatts. Anguilla peaks at 16 megawatts. Antigua peaks at 64 to 70 megawatts. So with these small systems, the BVI peaks are right around 30 megawatts. And with these small systems, a 1,200 megawatt or a 700 megawatt unit it, you just can't use it. A matter of fact, you don't start to see the savings in generation construction until you start building 100 megawatt units or larger, which you can't build in our region because of the size of the systems. When we come back from this break, we'll take a look at your weather report for tonight and tomorrow. 